Iraq with Phil Mudd and Spider Marks, along with Dan Senor, who served as the point man for the Bush administration in Iraq after the invasion, and Jim Zogby, who just finished meeting with National Security Advisor Susan Rice. Good to have all of you with us. Jim, you just finished meeting with the National Security Advisor. Um, what can you tell us about her thinking and this administration's thinking? Are they thinking they will intervene for a humanitarian crisis, or will they only intervene if they really believe that those 40 Americans in Erbil's lives are at risk? Well, I don't think I'm at liberty to divulge what the, the, the National Security Advisor said. I can just say that I think that the administration is deeply concerned, as they've demonstrated, uh, with the situation of the Chaldean Christians. We had a meeting uh, with uh, Ben Rhodes just last week with a group of Chaldean Christians talking about the specifics, uh, what can be done uh, to support them in the areas where they are and in the areas where they fled. Um, and, and to, to meet their needs and to provide some protection. At the same time, this uh, horrific situation of the Yazidis that just occurred in the last, uh, last few days mm -hmm. is something that is, is gripping uh, and gripping to everyone. So this is a humanitarian crisis, the ethnically cleansing entire areas of the country. This armed gang of thugs uh, that is uh, committing uh, atrocities against uh, people. I've been getting calls from folks uh, who've just come back from Iraq or in Iraq. Uh, it's heartbreaking what, what is happening. So I think the president is, is, is correct in providing humanitarian assistance, and now they're deliberating how and, and can they, um, I, what we're hearing is, uh, you know, can they in, involve themselves militarily? I see yeah. the Iraqi government is, the Air Force is. Yes. Uh, this is a gang of thugs that has to be stopped. And we should report, um, our Ivan Watson on the ground in our build tonight is reporting that two senior ISIS commanders, as they call themselves, Dan, were, uh, were killed by Iraqi airstrikes tonight about 30 miles away from Erbil. Yeah. But to the American public looking at this, they are saying, we've been in Iraq before. We've been in Iraq multiple times before. They do not see it as a success. They see it as something that is is, is a failure, and they say, why? Why should the United States go in for a humanitarian crisis in Iraq? There's humanitarian crises going on all around the world. Sure, so I remember John Kerry, I actually thought, made a very good argument yeah. for the intervention in Libya, mm -hmm. in which he said there's several criteria that we need to look at when we're contemplating uh, an intervention. One, is there a human cat cat catastrophe? Do our moral values, America's moral values, you know, have an interest here in addressing what's going on? Two, do we have a strategic interest? And three, do we have the capacity to do something? And I w that was true for Libya, and it's true for dealing with this humanitarian catastrophe, catastrophe today. It's mm -hmm. in our moral interests. It's consistent with our moral values. We have the capacity to do something, yeah. and it's actually in our strategic interest from presenting, from, 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 from in preventing this huge swath of a strategically important part of the Middle East being mm -hmm. overrun by a radical Islamist group. I mean, this is this is. Uh, it, imagine Afghanistan pre 9/11. This is, this is much more valuable real estate than Afghanistan pre-9-11, and you could have the same kind of totally open, non-governed, open space run by radical terrorist groups that are war but with the West. How, Dan, can U.S. airstrikes stop that from happening? Well, that if, would seem to just be something that's targeted and specific, and then anarchy continues. Sure. So if you look at what we did in Libya, if you look at what we did early on in Afghanistan, the first phase of Afghanistan after 9-11, if you look at what we did in the Balkans, it's a combination Mm -hmm. of air power, of some special operations on the ground, t certainly intelligence capabilities on the ground. You need some intelligence capabilities on the ground to communicate with your air power, and trainers, real trainers to work with the local military. Some combination yeah. of those capabilities can actually help fill a vacuum and do real damage and contain, if not set back, an insurgency. This is what we've done this several times before. So, all right, Spider, so when you hear what Dan's saying, is this something the United States could do? And how quickly the could they could it be done? The United States can do almost anything it wants to do. Um, the challenge that we have is, I need to go back to what Jim said. I, I think if we demonize ISIS with the word thug, we might in fact diminish uh, the image that we have of these guys. They are incredibly egregious, and it's like the Taliban on steroids, and they're an armed, capable force. So if you put that on the table, the answer then becomes, as Dan described, an ungoverned space as an inevitable outcome. If that's an okay outcome for us, and if Baghdad can live with us, li live with that type of an outcome, then the decision's an easy one. We'll, we'll sit there, we'll monitor. I don't subscribe to the fact that ISIS is going to be metered in any way. They certainly are not going to control themselves, and they're not bounded by any sense of rules of engagement or any sense of propriety at all. So the United States 
has an obligation so, in my mind to get involved not only for the humanitarian part but also to ensure that we don't lose Baghdad. So Phil, does this does it get better though if the United States intervenes? You look at Libya, uh, some might argue that was a success, but certainly it is lawless and there's a, a lot of anarchy going on there. There's gunfights and and insurgents controlling much of that country now. I don't think the tipping point is whether the United States gets involved or not. I'm not arguing for or against. That's a separate question. Yeah. What I would say is, in my experience of watching these groups, here's the horrible tragedy of this. The decision about whether ISIS succeeds or fails or is in the hands of the people in the villages and towns that ISIS takes over. If you look at insurgent groups moving in places like Afghanistan, Algeria, in towns in Egypt, what will happen, I suspect, is until ISIS murders tens of thousands of people, you're going to have some Iraqi civilians who are going to say, I'm not sure I want to get involved in this. When, though, those civilians start to say, I can't take it anymore, this is too much, that's when the tide turns, not when we start bo dropping bombs overhead. A quick final word. Uh, yeah, if you look at what worked with the surge in Iraq in 2007, 2008, you had that element. You had the Iraqi local civilian population rising up, mm -hmm. but they couldn't have done what they had, what they did Correct. without the surge of American forces, without us partnering with Iraqis to give them the security mm -hmm. and the space to take on their own insurgency. It applied then. The same applies now. I'm not talking about a, a big, you know, redeployment of ground troops, but point. you need some capability. All right. Thanks.